Hey guys, uh, I haven't made a video in quite some time. Uh, today of all days, of course, I made a video because it is May 10th and I'm not really uh, into, you know, a lot of bands' personal lives, but today actually just happens to be Bono's birthday from U2 and being that I've listened to U2 since I was about nine years old, eight, nine years old. Um, I've been buying U2 cassettes and records. You can't really see the cassettes, I've got them all laid out behind me and I'll kind of do a run through after I do my records. I'm only going to do the albums and not the 12 inch singles, so just the albums. Uh, first, start with U2 Boy. Um, this one's actually the German print of U2 Boy. I got this for, I want to say I got it for like $4 or $5 maybe 10 years ago at a place called Eastside Records in Tempe. It was so cheap and I just couldn't pass it up. I also got the 12 in, or the CD version of it and the cassette. Uh, this one is U2 Boy. This is the American. So... And a few different versions of that guy. Um, I actually have to say, my favorite songs off of YouTube Boy, um, probably "And Cat Dove" and "Into the Heart," uh, "Shadows and Tall Trees." It's the last track on the album. It's kind of a funny song, but you know, I do enjoy the entire album. Uh, from start to finish, but yeah, if I had to pick songs like Ancat Dub, you know, would be one of those songs that I would choose. Second is, and this is the Japanese print, I have a couple of American copies, but this is a Japanese print of October. Um, off of this I would say probably uh, Rejoice and Fire, I Fall Down. Tomorrow with a shout, Stranger in a Strange Land, Scarlet, and Is That All. So, pretty much the entire album. I know me and Brett have gone back and forth talking about E2 October and what our favorite E2 records are. Uh, I would say Unfriable Fire, but honestly, my number one, if I had to put them in order, would be October. This is such a great album. So, very cool. Um, next is U2 War. And if I had to choose a song off of this, I would probably choose, um, kind of the Stranger songs off this album. I don't, I think this album was so hyped up because of Sunday Bloody Sunday and New Year's Day and Two Art Sweet as One, those singles, and then of course 40, which, uh, U2 a lot of times would close all their shows with 40, and little story behind 40 was that they wrote it in 10 minutes and they rehearsed it in 10 minutes and then they recorded it uh, in 10 minutes and then mixed it down so it took 40 minutes to write 40 so that's kind of why they went with that song uh, as kind of a closing track and it was such a great you know song to end the record with this is not um, an album, this is uh, U2 Unfreeable, or sorry, What Awake in America, and I just realized I don't even have my Unfreeable Fire <laughs> vinyl with me. Uh, I have several copies of Unfreeable Fire, but uh, this is the, the EP from it, and um, this is White Awake in America. This had the two um, B-sides. Um, yeah, Three Sunrises and Love Comes Tumbling are just amazing songs. They're a lot like the B-sides for Joshua Tree. The, the Joshua Tree B-sides were so amazing that they should have just been on the album. Joshua Tree should have been like a double album, but uh, instead they got uh, some amazing singles. and So it, it was enough to, buy, to get me to buy all those singles, definitely. So... Uh, here it is, Joshua Tree. Um, I actually got out my remastered box set of this the other day and I was driving around listening to it. Um, One Tree Hill and Exit, you know, Mothers of the Disappeared. Um, 
you know, even Trip Through Your Wires are just amazing songs. So I, I think a lot of the songs were kind of overshadowed by the first three songs on the album, which are Where's Your Sendings and Why well, Some I'm Looking For and With or Without You. So definitely an amazing album. Um, so Josh Tree right there, Josh Tree National Forest. Uh, if you go there now, actually, the actual Josh Tree fell over. Um, and there's a, a copy of Josh Tree out there, and a lot of people signed the record. It's a really cool gatefold uh, picture. So, yeah, absolutely great album. I think I got Josh Tree um, when it came out. Like I said, I got into him when I was like nine. So. This is my YouTube Rattle and Hum. Um, I actually really like Rattle and Hum. I wasn't disappointed when it came out originally, but I think if there was a live album, then like an album of new material, this album would have been uh, a little more well received. I don't think it went over very well because people were expecting like the Josh Tree Part 2, and I'm glad that they didn't put out. Josh Free Part 2 because, um, seriously, uh, Heartland, uh, Hawkmoon 269, um, were absolutely amazing songs. I mean, I like Love Rescue Me, I like When Love Comes to Town, but I don't really repeatedly play those tracks. Um, <clears throat> again, Silver and Gold, you know, the live version, it was originally the B-side for Where Streets Have No Names. Uh, Desire was a great track, but it had kind of a, a different tone, I think, you know, with, you know, going over with, like, tracks like Heartland. Heartland is just my absolute favorite song off of this record, so there it is, Use Here Run Home. Um, this next one I actually should have no trouble identifying it. This is... No Line on the Horizon, um, it's got a cool picture of the band, the front, and then on the back. So I'd actually have to say Magnificent off of this um, are absolutely favorite songs. Uh, another one would be actually the title track, No Line on the Horizon and Moment of Surrender. Absolutely amazing. Um, when they did No Land on the Horizon at the show, I realized that that was my favorite song. So I was in the front row. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to post some pictures. I got some really good pictures of Bono. Um, I saw in UC for Joshua Tree um, and on every tour since then I've you know seen them twice for Pop Mart because that was my favorite you know show. I saw them uh, twice for All That You Can't Leave Behind, I saw them in Seattle, I saw them here in Phoenix. So they always do like a really great show. Um, I, I'd have to agree with Brett, my friend Brett. Um, it's almost like a religious experience. It's just, if you've never seen U2, and I actually find it hard to believe in the, in the vinyl community at least that, you know, there's people that haven't seen U2. I'm sure a lot of people have, either you love them or hate them. So. Um, those are my 12-inch records. Like I said, I do have Unfriendable Fire. Actually, I can see it right there. Hold on, I'll just grab it. Um, still in its protective bag there. Unfriendable Fire. Um, I have several copies of this. I would actually have to say that this is such a great record. I don't think there's a... Like October, there's not a bad song on here. Um, I'm listening to it now. I listen to it frequently. So, you two in front of a fire. Uh, I'm sure I'll do the 12-inch the singles some other time, but I, I really just wanted to do this video today because it's Bono's uh, birthday. Uh, he was born May 10th, 1960. Um, he's 53. He's such an amazing humanitarian... Just, uh, the things that he's kind of, you know, brought about, you know, anti-apartheid, uh, that was, I read in one of their books, I have several YouTube books, and that's one of the things that a lot of rock bands were handed off as, um, a deal, and YouTube, you know, they actually chose that on their own, they didn't get, you know, 
endorse or paid to do it. They took it upon themselves to do it. You know, Amnesty International and all of that. So, but those are my records. Uh, and now I'll show you some of the selected collectibles. I actually have. I'm not really sure how many UT things I have. I, I have a lot um, that I've collected in my 30 years of being a fan of the band. <laughs> Um, that I would like to show. So I've got some bootlegs and some box sets and some CDs and some stands and I have my posters um, that I'll show as well from when I was 10 years old just before I saw them for Josh Tree. So um, I hope you like this. I know there's a lot of YouTube fans out there so hopefully there's other people posting things today as well. So here I'll show you the collectibles I have. So I've got um, some YouTube pop. This is uh, Last Night on Earth, and this was live in South Africa, 1998. Um, that's in Johannesburg. This is the greatest show on Earth, and these are all silver discs. So this one's live from Sarajevo, and like I said, there's that uh, Australasian. YouTube boy. I got this for ten dollars. Brand new. Um, when I... I believe I actually found it when I got my YouTube boy on CD. So this is the Japanese YouTube pop. And um, those of you who follow Brett's posts, uh, there it is. Um, the Japanese CD version of Zeropa, uh, VJ. VC member VJ sent Brett an orange vinyl of Zeropa, and it's such a great album. I actually have to agree with some of the other uh, members of the VC. There are so many great songs on this, like, Z you know, the title track, Zeropa. Um, Numb is great, you know, to hear the Edge, you know, sing with, you know, Bono and Larry in the background vocals. Uh, Lemon, Stay Far Away So Close, what a great single. Uh, Daddy's gonna play or pay for your crushed car. You know what a great song. So um, that's the Japanese print. So really great. There's the anniversary box set of Josh Tree. Unfamable Fire. I've got the, the How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb Deluxe. It's got the book with the album and the DVD. Um, another one I'm really proud of. I got this brand new when it came out. Um, in Denver, it was, uh, you can still kind of see the price I get, it's $5.99, this is the Yellow Vinyl Lemon Remixes, 12 inch with, you know, the yellow colored vinyl, this is, um, the reason we didn't see this earlier, because this is my sealed U2 Octung Baby, I've never opened this guy, so I probably won't, Brett's got it on vinyl, uh, I just don't see opening it, you know, it's got the unedited version of Adam Clayton, the YouTube bass player. Uh, this was given to me by Sinkweeds. This is a Pop Mart um, standee. It was on the, the counter at a few record stores, and this is from the Friday, May 9th, which was yesterday. Um, so the, again, you know, it's the day before Bono's birthday, and that's why I chose that guy to show. Uh, this is U2. The party still goes on. This is another silver disc bootleg. And um, it's uh, from Gothenburg, Sweden. So that one's really cool if you want to check it out. And then there's that U2 cassette. Um, there's that boy and that U2-3 on cassette, Japanese War, Unfable Fire. A lot of other singles. Um, Zeropa and Octone Baby on cassettes. Um, this is kind of that strange version I have of Rattle and Hum. And then again, for to a, um, kind of promote how to dismantle an atomic bomb. That's the counter display. Again, also from Stinkweeds Records. Um, you know, another Josh, that's a Octone Baby. This is the first night of the tour for Octone Baby. That was live in Florida. This is an audience recording. It's it's fair. I mean, it's definitely worth the money. 
Um, I think I paid $55 for that when I bought it. That's a Japanese print of Unfrable Fire. And then on to these posters. Uh, this is a Josh Tree poster I got uh, when I was about 10 years old, going on to 11. A uh, lot of thumbtack holes in the corners of that guy. All the moving around we did. Uh, and this is another Josh Tree poster. This one's a color poster. Um, both of these are pictures from the Josh Tree tour book, which I should probably get out sometime and do a, a YouTube books. Uh, and other collectibles, but that's a YouTube poster for Josh Tree. Another one I have is actually this guy up here, and that's Rattle and Hum. Uh, I also have the Rattle and Hum movie poster, which I believe Brett picked up a copy of it the other day. Um, he was uh, given a copy, or sorry, a poster, not really a copy, but he was given a poster by Record Room. Me and Brett frequent Record Room quite often, so we really love that place. So if you ever come to Phoenix to kind of check them out. Uh, this is the mask that people would wear during uh, the 360 tour. I got one. You'd wear it during Walk On, and that's the Ong Sun face to get her you know, released. She'd been held prisoner in her own home. And so it's definitely a worthy cause, so. But anyways, those are my collectibles, so. Uh, just to kind of celebrate Bano's birthday. So thanks for checking out.